Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Alex and I now have a six month old Sage. I say this every single video, I'm so annoying, but truly it's insane how fast time goes when you have a kid, it's crazy. But we are now starting solids. We're actually a couple days in, I'm making a whole video on the first week of what she's eating and how it's going and all that stuff. But today's video is gonna be all the resources and products that I got before we started that I found to be really helpful and the things that I felt like I just needed to feel confident going into feeding my baby for the first time. She's my first baby, so all of this is new for me. So I think that this will be helpful for new moms. We are doing baby-led weaning and probably a little mix of purees. I'm kind of trying to allow this to not be a stressful thing and just something we can just enjoy and learn along the way. But I have found that baby led weaning seems to be the thing that I feel drawn to. So I'll talk about all the resources and products again that go into all of that. But most of the things I'm talking about today are going to be helpful regardless of how you're choosing to feed your baby. So let's go ahead and just start this. Okay, my number one research so far, just right off the bat, is this book by Plant Based Juniors. That's what their Instagram thing is. I don't think it says it on here. Oh yeah, okay, it says creators of Plant Based Juniors. My husband and I are plant-based and we are choosing to raise sage plant-based. And I will just say that you can 100% raise a child and a child can thrive off of a plant-based diet. So let's just be nice. <laughs> I know everyone has an opinion about things and the thing is I've, I've been living this lifestyle for 10 years. This is not something that I take lightly and then I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like I have done hours and years of research and this is something I feel very confident in. If you don't agree with me, that's totally fine. You get to live your life, I get to live my life. So if you're planning to raise your baby plant-based, your toddler plant-based, or even just wanna incorporate more of a plant-based diet and just staying away from processed foods and things like that, this is a really great book. The questions that anyone may have for me about this, the answer is in here. It's science-based nutrition information. There's a ton of recipes. It breaks everything down. Even knowing this lifestyle in and out, there's still things that I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, I didn't know that, or this is a great reminder. And literally it's just my number one resource. It talks about baby led weaning, obviously deeply about nutrition and ton of recipes in the back. I'm obsessed with this book. I'm a huge fan and I'm gonna stop talking about it now, but this is my number one resource. Okay, I'm going to be really, really honest with you. I, I did a course that is about starting solids and things like that and it was about $50 and I honestly think it was a waste of money and I don't wanna say what it was because I would never wanna bash any business. These are It's a women owned business so I wouldn't wanna, you know, it might be helpful for somebody else but I felt like that book answered everything and then just all the other research that you might be doing leading up to starting solids. I feel like I found that in just the other research and didn't necessarily have to do a course. Um, it's pretty thorough. It gives you know PDFs and things like that if you wanna save it. But for me personally, I just felt like, oh, I probably, I could have gone without spending the 50 bucks on that course. So that's just me being honest. Another thing I would highly recommend is doing some kind of CPR course or class or whatever. Um, I did the Tiny Hood one. It's an online class. It was very easy to go through. It literally took me you know, a few minutes, it was not anything extensive. And I felt like I got equipped with the knowledge that I need if something were to happen, especially with baby led weaning. One of the main concerns is that babies are going to choke. I think just in general, as a parent, that is good knowledge to have for yourself, your baby, even, you know, when you're in public and if someone's choking, I just think that it's something that adults should know. And I will make sure to list everything that I'm talking about below for you. Okay, I have this drawer down here that I put a little basket in and then all of her things just to keep it in one spot. And then maybe one day when she's older, I can you know have her have some independence and like grab her uh, plates and grab her utensils and things like that. But I'm gonna pull this out and I'll show you everything in it. Okay, before I get into that basket, I wanna talk about this. So I think I have a random watermelon. So the up seat. In my opinion, this is the seat to get instead of the bumbo because it has an ergonomic design to it to where the baby is gonna have 90 degree angles at their ankles, knees, and hips, which is what you want for eating food. So the tray easily comes off. There's a little buckle kind of thing underneath it. Yeah, easily comes off so you can clean it. 
they buckle in and there's a really wide space right here for their thighs because you see a lot of babies in the bumbo seats that just don't have any space and the hip width is wider which apparently is better for their little bodies so look into this it's called the up seat but i'm very happy that we got this compared to the bumbo it is a little bit more pricey but I think that it's gonna be worth it. I got the gray instead of the pink so that we could use it for all babies in case we have a boy. So I don't know. I, I was fine investing in something like this. Say hello. She's being a good girl while mommy talks about all the things. <laughs> okay, let's go through this little basket. This is from Mommy Ark. It's silicone utensils and this little bowl, which sticks really well to the tray. Um, we haven't really gotten into that too much, but I think it'll be helpful. I've been letting her play with this stuff before she even started solids or even during meals when I'm eating and she's not, just to like kind of get her used to this. And then the silicone bibs I think are really nice because they have that little pocket, super, super easy to clean. And I have one other one, I think. Yeah, I do have another one. Okay, I have two. She wore this one earlier, but I think having two is the perfect amount. Okay, these little plates are silicone plates, and I think I got these uh, from my registry off of Amazon, but um, Mushy, is it Mushy? Is that what the brand's called? Mushy, Mushy, whatever. They have these, but you can find a lot of other ones. I just make sure that I get like the non-toxic ones. So yeah, I have three of them. I don't feel like I need any more. Okay, I am obsessed with Super Cubes, and I used this for the first time today with her food because I did do some sweet potato slices and I was able to easily put them in there since we are doing baby lead weaning and the pieces are like a finger length kind of thing. They fit in here really well. It's made from silicone and the lid fits on really well. So you can put it in the fridge, in the freezer. I saw this on Shark Tank and I was sold immediately. And they do have this teether, so this doesn't really have to go with your baby starting solids, but I think it's gonna be really nice to put in different fruits and stuff. I've used it for banana so far and the breast popsicles, but I can add you know, watermelon, um, mango, things like that. Even just for a snack, I think will be nice just to have on hand um, to let her try new flavors as well. Okay, I do have a couple little cups. These were gifted to us. We did get this cup with the Love Every subscription box that we got this month. And so this is what she's been using today. Um, and this is more of a Montessori concept of having an open cup for a baby. They do have silicone ones, so if they fall, it's not gonna you know, break or anything. But having one that's heavy enough, I think is gonna be helpful, but you know, either way. Oh wait, I do remember, I bought this when I was pregnant and I loved the color and I thought it was so cute. And it came, it came with this bowl and this little utensil. So yeah, this I just have had for a long time. So I don't know how well this quality is, but anyway. All right, and then these little containers are probably more so for pureeing, which I'm, I'm not gonna be really doing a lot of, but in the event that I do, I'm glad that I have these. And even just to make little dressings and sauces and things like that, I'm sure that this will come in handy. Got these off of Amazon, but I really liked the color palette of the lids. I know it's just a stupid reason to buy these, but I thought it was really cute. And it did come with a little dry erase marker so you can write the date on the top. Okay, something else that has been extremely helpful is the Solid Starts app. Their website is really great too. They also have an Instagram page with a lot of great information. So you can keep track daily the new foods that you're trying. And then, for example, click on a food and it tells you all the health, nutrition. It tells you about the allergies. There's recipes. Um, tells you how to serve it. There's videos, so I like this because if you are doing baby lead weaning, it shows you how to serve it. This app just has a ton, ton of information and it's become really, really helpful. And you can track if your baby has had a reaction to anything. So yeah, definitely download this. I did buy the $10 subscription, but that covers the entire year. So I felt like that was definitely worth it. But yeah, check this out. All right, I heard a lot of mixed reviews on buying a baby food maker. I feel like there's certain people that love them and then other people said that it was such a waste of money, especially because the baby's not having purees you know, for a long amount of time. Now that baby led weaning is gonna be the main way that we feed her, I'm glad that I didn't buy one. But in the event that I do make her some purees, I got a new Nutribullet that is so cute it's white and gold i'm so annoying about this but i needed a bigger one anyway i do have like a little magic bullet thing and it's just smaller so it's better for like sauces and things like that i could make a small smoothie but anyway it was annoying so i really wanted this neutral bullet my sister had it and i thought it was so cute and i was like well if i make her food it's just like a two for one i can make my smoothies 
and a bigger thing and then also you know make her stuff so completely not necessary but if you're thinking the same way i did i've used this a lot for myself and it would be a great way to make purees so something else that i got that might have been a waste of money i do not know because i have to talk to our pediatrician about this i got some iron drops and i love the wellaments brand all their stuff is organic so yeah i'm gonna wait to talk to the pediatrician about this because baby's iron will drop around four to six months so that's why food plays an important role it's crazy i look over at her and she's several feet away from where i put her and she is not crawling yet it's crazy so anyway yeah iron is one of those things that they can start to get through food when they start solids and in that book that i showed you it does talk about how you completely can do that on a plant-based diet and you babies do not have to eat meat to get the iron i did get amaranth seed and have been using that well i just tried it one time but making that it's kind of like a quinoa oatmeal kind of texture and then i put breast milk in it and gave that to her the other day and right now she's not liking like anything but moving forward i think that will be a nice staple to have because it's super high in iron so i think she'll be fine but if i need to supplement I can put one of these drops, you know, in the amaranth or whatever, or in just food that she's eating. So it's something I am gonna talk to our doctor about. Yeah, could have been a waste of money. I'm not sure, but I have them on hand if I if I need them. For those that are doing baby lead weaning, this little crinkle cutter is supposed to be great. I actually did use it this morning. It's all wet. I did use it this morning when I made her some sweet potatoes. So we are on day what day are we on? Three or four of her trying food. So we're very fresh into this, but this was really fun to use. The grooves on this are supposed to help the baby be able to grip because they can't do the pincer grip. They're using like their whole hand, you know? So I can do this with sweet potatoes, um, avocado, that kind of thing. So yeah, get one of these. Apparently it's like six bucks on Amazon. Okay, I don't know if anyone has heard of this or got an ad on Instagram about it like I did, but it's called the Life Vac, and I'll put a picture of it here, but I ended up buying one. It was like $70, but an ad, it got me, it got me. This device helped save a 10 month old's life. And I hope that I completely wasted $70, but it'll be the best $70 that I've wasted in my entire life. So basically this baby got pancakes stuck in its throat and they were at a restaurant. The mom was screaming and freaking out. It was literally terrifying to watch. So yeah, the video is very hard to watch, but the mom's like screaming and they're trying to you know do cpr on this baby and nothing's working this man runs out to his truck and gets this device and they put the baby on the table he used the device and it made the the pancake come out of the baby's throat save the baby's life apparently the guy had this little device in his truck for years and never used it but put it in his car just in case if he ever needed to Long story short, glad that he did, saved the baby's life. And I know every parent like freaks out about their child choking, whatever, for good reason. No one wants their child to choke. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna have it. We're gonna keep it in our car. We can easily go grab it. And then that way it's in the car with us when we're traveling and things like that. Again, hope to God that I never use it and I completely wasted $70. But if I do happen to use it, it'll be, that is absolutely priceless and $70 means absolutely nothing, you know? Like saving a life is the most important thing. So yeah, totally just putting that out there if you've never heard of it. Oh yeah, you can obviously decide if it's something you wanna have on hand. Okay guys, I caved. I caved when it comes to the high chair. There is, there's so much research that goes into this stuff with baby stuff, like the car seat and the stroller and which one to pick and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a lot. So when it came to the high chair, Kind of was the same thing, but the more that I was researching, the more that I found that it does actually make a difference, the design of the chair, especially with the ergonomic design and making sure the babies have their right angles, that way they're sitting upright, that, you know, to prevent choking and things like that. Another thing that I kept coming across was to have a foot rest so the baby his legs are not dangling because that can make a baby like antsy or, you know, compensate by like leaning against something, causing them to not be straight up and, all this stuff. So babies just eat better when they have a foot rest and they're able to sit up straight and all the things. So I was looking at the Trip Trap, which is the Stoke brand, um, which is a Swedish company, I believe. And the design of it is, it's actually really beautiful. It matches the aesthetic of my home. Just like this natural wood color. And it honestly can grow with your baby. Like it has a newborn attachment, which we're past that phase, obviously. And then the high chair kind of version that is with this age. And then it also transitions into a toddler seat. And one thing I do like about it is that it goes up against 
the table. So I did order the tray. You can choose not to do a tray just in case if we're not always right up against the table. If she's like over here with me while I'm in the kitchen, I wanted to have that option. So I did get the trip trap. I don't have it yet, but I did just look it up and tracking says that it's supposed to arrive today. So if I do get it today and I'm able to put it together, I'll add it into this video. So yeah, it definitely was a splurge. So not that you need to spend a ton of money, but I would say to look into a high chair that has an ergonomic design and that has a footrest for your baby. And yeah. <gasps> oh my God, look what's here. Okay, so those are all of my resources so far with how I have prepped slash am prepping for feeding her solids. So I hope that that list was gonna be helpful for you. If there's anything that I missed and something that you really like, you wanna share with me and share with everyone else, make sure you comment below. But yeah, stay tuned for more baby food videos. I'll make some about like what I'm actually feeding her, how I'm preparing it, maybe how baby led weaning is going and all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. And we will see you in the next one. Okay, bye guys. Say bye. Bye guys. Say bye. Bye guys. See ya. <laughs>